in the Office of Student Recruitment here at UAPB, and I want to welcome you to our luncheon. It's, uh, it's been a fun day so far. We've got some things lined up for you this afternoon. And it's, it's always a pleasure having you on our campus. And I, like I tell my colleagues, I tell counselors that all the time, that I, I love this school with a passion. And we've got some positive things going on. And you're gonna, if you, you've seen some of this morning, and you're going to see some this afternoon. Moving right along with the program, we're going to have uh, greetings by by Leon Crumlin, who's pinch hitting for our administrative coordinator of student affairs, Mr. Bennett. He had to be at the Board of Trustees meeting, and after which uh, we're going to have an invocation by Tadaria Perkins. We're waiting on the mayor, but when, whenever she comes, we'll bring her up and do a welcome from the city. Mr. Crumlin. <clears throat> Again, welcome to our campus, and we hope that you have learned a few things, and we hope that you have a few more things to learn about our campus because we're here to serve our students. And you being counselors and career coaches in the high schools, you have a similar job. So I think we need to work together to make it better for all of our students. Now we have, um, we have a student that really needs to leave to go to a class. So uh, right after the invocation, we're gonna have her come up and do her portion so that she can get on to class because it's all about classwork also. All right, thank you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all administrators, counselors, and our entire audience. We thank you for the participants of, this, of these activities. Psalms 91, 1 and 2 states, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I would say of the Lord, He, I, he my refuge, and my fortress, my God in Him. I will trust in these words, I pray. Amen. Uh, good afternoon, all. My name is Alicia Sunflower Wilson. I am a junior at uh, Aquaculture and Fisheries Department, and I would like to present to you about the UAPB Aquaculture and Fisheries Center. So, my life at UAPB in the Fisheries Department. For the past three years, I've been working on a concept of heat hardening and cross protection with one of our faculty members, uh, Dr. Elf Harkness. This has led my research to go to a National American Fisheries Society meeting in Seattle, which I was awarded a travel grant of $2,000 to participate. So I've also was awarded a uh, research for undergraduates experience where I got to go to Southeast Alaska. And for the whole summer, I did research on crabs and metabolism. And I found that very fun, and without U UAPB Fisheries Center, I wouldn't be able to have done any of this. Um, here's some of our other students. They have all graduated and uh, are pursuing master degrees. And one thing about our students here is we push each other to move farther ahead. We're also close-knit, like a family, and always there for each other when anything goes wrong. And are very caring, it's like a family. And that's what I really enjoy about the fisheries department too. Here's some of our other students. They have gone to work with US Fish and Wildlife, become game wardens, and US Marshals. And um, what the fisheries department does here is push their undergraduate students to pursue research so that they're able to grow academically and professionally in a careerized manner. Um, we have some more students here. The, um, the two pictures over on the, I guess that's your left, and are of the Fish Disease Lab, which has a number of students that work there with fish disease and health and do a number of projects. And actually kind of, I'll show you later, uh, down the amount of fish that are thrown through our lab that is almost used nationally. Up in the right hand corner we have our graduating senior Adwa and she is working right now in the Gulf Corp Gulf Coast. Um, so in fisheries we have been awarded a number of awards. We have gotten awards at Arkansas American Fisheries Society, the Mid-South Undergraduate Research Conference, CIFWA, and the UAPB Faculty and Student Research Forum. 
and this is all research that these undergraduates have done and worked through, analyzed the data, and presented in front of a audience. Um, for high school students, we have Aquatic Sciences Day. We've had at least 648 students from 16 different high schools. Most of the time it's 9 a.m. to noon. I do not know the date for um, this year's, but you should keep watch and maybe your students can come down here and experience uh, the learning of biochemistry, nutrition, physiology, and biology of fish. Um, we have a number of academic programs. We have a bachelor's in fisheries, um, master's degrees in aquaculture and fisheries, and now we recently have a degree in uh, a Ph. degree in aquaculture and fisheries. And I have this little slide here. We had to work our way up. And when we finally got approved, we were exactly like very happy. <laughs> um, the faculty. We have a number of faculty and since the fisheries program is a little bit smaller, uh, they know you on a name-to-name -name basis. They also always have the doors open and willing to answer any questions almost any time of the day, except when they're in like meetings or phone conferences to other people. And we have a number of extension specialists from like Lanoke and Little Rock that uh, come down here and work with our students too and our facilities aren't just our only on UAPB campus. Um, our newest member to our faculty is Scott Jones and I will tell you a little bit more about what he is doing now that he is involved in the fisheries program. So here is our research ponds and if you do get a chance you should go down and see this. It's amazing of how big this facility is. We have 125 research ponds and a number of buildings down there for water quality and other raising of aquaculture species. We also have a little bit less than 21,000 square feet of lab space that students can do research in and pursue almost about anything they would like to study about fish. Um, we have a disease health lab, which I mentioned earlier. Um, you go out sometimes and there'll be these bags sitting in loading docks. There'll be like a huge bags of just fish that are sent from all over the state. Um, it does fish health lab expansions on every bait, sport fish, largemouth bass, hybrid striped bass, ornamental, and grass carp from Arkansas, as well as from other, many other states. And here is Scott Jones again. He, is, he has recently become the newest coach to the UAPB fishing team. And as part of his extension help, he is starting youth fishing, our fishing teams, and he wants to create the UAPB bass team, and this is his concept of boat that he is proposing to put through. And for high school students, he goes out and helps them organize fishing teams and everything else. And that is my presentation. Sunshine does an outstanding job for us. Now it's time for us to partake in some of this delicious food that we have. So we're going to, rather than have everybody bounce up at one time, Dana, come on, help me. This this is Dana in our our office. Uh, we're gonna take we're gonna take these first two tables and go through the line and and then we'll come back and get another table. Okay. All right. Like I always say, if you haven't finished eating, then hurry up. <laughs> now, we, we're gonna go on and start the program and, and uh, we're gonna bring up uh, from our STEM Academy. Uh, Ms. Uh, Chandra Taylor and Taylor Osborne are going to come up and do a presentation. We passed out STEM books so that you can get a good feel of who we are and be able to have some visual aids to take back to your students. Included in that is an application. It's the book that includes every program that we do. It also has a brochure that explains the summer program and the Scholars Academy. Now the STEM Scholars Academy is a grant funded undergraduate program that gives support to underrepresented groups of students who are majoring in STEM areas. 
The STEM career fields were projected to grow by 17% between 2008 and 2018, as opposed to a 9.8% growth in non-STEM career fields. But only three out of 10 of those employers, well, employees, were underrepresented groups, including minorities and women. Even though women represent 50% of the workforce, we're still only 25% in STEM areas. The overall goal of the STEM Scholars Academy is to increase those numbers of underrepresented groups within the career fields. And this starts with obtaining an undergraduate degree in those STEM areas. Approximately 25% of our undergraduate student body is made up of STEM majors, with 32% of those being involved in the STEM Scholars Academy. Not only is the STEM Scholars Academy helping students perform research in STEM areas, but we keep our students interested and engaged in their major, and that's evident with our retention rate. Last year, our retention rate was 87%. This year, it's increased to 95% within our STEM scholars. Approximately 23% of undergraduate degrees conferred were STEM majors, and 40% of those were our STEM scholars. So those statistics prove that we are successful in the STEM Scholars Academy as you start to increase your knowledge about STEM and give it on to your students. Now, when we first started, we only had 25 STEM students in the program in the academic year of 2004 and 2005. Now we have approximately 253 STEM scholars enrolled in the Scholars Academy. Our growth has led to the expansion of a graduate degree program. Now we have a STEM program that's on the graduate level. And of course, the breaking ground and building of our new STEM Academy and Conference Center, which we're very proud of. We begin our reach to the students on the junior high school and high school levels at our science fair and exposition. That normally happens around February of each year. What we do is we allow them to come in and do research, present projects, and actually get a, a feel of what it's like to give a presentation on what they've actually learned. After that exposure, we do the Saturday Academy. The Saturday Academy takes grade levels from 10th grade to 12th grade, and they expose them to every STEM field that we have, that we offer at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. So they get a chance to do chemistry, biology, industrial technology, computer science. They get a chance to dabble in all of it, which really helps if they're undecided on a major that they actually want to pursue. And in some cases, it changes the majors that they want to pursue once they get to the Saturday Academy. That leads us to the Summer Academy. Now, the Summer Academy is a transitional program that will take those students who have been accepted into the STEM Scholars Academy and transition them from high school until uh, well, to college. We'll bring them on campus from about six to seven weeks. We'll house them, we'll feed them, but they'll go through a very strict and stringent summer program that includes academics, studying, along with a workout program in the morning. We'll take a couple of trips, they'll get a chance to do a couple of their classes early, and a stipend is provided for those services of up to $1,800 depending on which program they're in. Now I'm going to introduce Taylor Osborne. This is our uh, STEM student body vice president, one of my personal babies. <laughs> and he's going to tell you about our STEM Scholars Academy, and this on the, college, the undergraduate college level. And he'll tell you a little bit about his experiences with STEM. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Taylor Osborne. I'm a biology pre-medicine major in that is the best area of STEM. What the STEM Scholar Academy is and provides to the scholars is a strong peer faculty and staff academic support system. Every Thursday we have a weekly meeting at 11 a.m. During those meetings we have guest lectures which bring a wealth of knowledge, expertise, and insight on opportunities in all STEM fields across the world and it provides the students with examples of ways they can utilize their undergraduate and graduate degrees in STEM career fields post-college. 
We also engage in community service projects such as STEM cleanups and STEM, and I'm, I'm sorry, Saturday Academy. <clears throat> During our meetings, we discuss networking <coughs> and research opportunities at various conferences and workshops and internship opportunities. I myself have been accepted into two internships for the summer, which I will be taking one in Fayetteville for a undergraduate research opportunity and I'll be doing research on muscle physiology. Now, what are the minimum requirements and qualifications for STEM? The student must be a part of an underrepresented underrepresented group. They also must declare a STEM major. The STEM major offered at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff are biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, industrial technology, management and applied engineering, computer science, animal science, and plant science. They must have a cumulative GPA of 2.8 or higher and the ACT minimum is a 19 or above. And now we are back in the hands of Ms. Taylor. Thank you. Well, as counselors, you play a big role in our success with our STEM scholars, and that's been evident with the quality and the quantity of students that have come across my desk and as way of application. Even though our minimum GPA that is accepted to get into the program is a 19. Our average is up to, I mean, I'm sorry, not the GPA, but the ACT is a 19. <coughs> our average is up to 22. Now, the same thing with the GPA. The minimum GPA is a 2.8, but our average right now is a 3.4. So that shows that you're working with the students to get them qualified and let them know what they need to do in order to be prepared for some of these opportunities outside of high, high school. And I thank you for that. Now, in conclusion, all of our programs are geared to getting the student a job or a graduate opportunity after they finish their undergraduate degree. As we prepare for the Summer Academy right now, we continue to ask you to advise your students on the different programs that are offered at our university. We know it's exciting and um, fun to go far places away from home, but the students really need to be advised of the innovative programs that are available to them right here at the university. And, and it's actually a lot more beneficial to, for them to be closer home, closer to home, than it is for them to go away to college. It just increases the cost and it increases the headache to a lot of the students, to be honest. And we've found a lot of success with our homegrown students that have come from you guys, and I thank you. My name is Kiara Ford, and I'm a native of Palmer, Arkansas, and I'm an alumnus of Watson Chapel High School. <laughs> I'm a junior here at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and I'm an ag business major with a 3.5 GPA. Later, you will watch a video that will tell you about my previous experiences. When I came to UAPB, I was determined to get an early start on internships that I will be marketable upon graduation. So when this opportunity presented itself, I applied for it. Oh, I'm so sorry, excuse me. Um, when I came to UAPB, I was determined to get an early start on internships so, that, so I would be marketable upon graduation. So when this opportunity presented itself, I applied for it. My advisor, Ms. Tracy Nelson, contacted me and told me that Student Conservation Association, which is SCA, had a, had a partnership through the Office of Career Services that I needed to register to complete the criteria for an internship. Once I registered, I was on my way to build a polished resume along with, my op with, along with other opportunities that I was not aware of. This is when my journey began. I have had three internships, which includes my current position at Tyson in Star City in the poultry production section. There I am getting experience learning how the egg is hatched from when it is took into the houses to be grown and until, it's get on, until it gets on your plate. <laughs> <laughs> this, summer I will return, I, this summer I will return to Monsanto to a second time as a field sales internship in Amarillo, Texas. There in Amarillo, Texas, I will be a field sales intern. I will be in the field working with new products that they produce like drought protected guard seeds. 
also will be working with farmers to see what the company can do to better their company, see what they can better them on the field and also in, in corporate. And also I will be um, a returning intern, I will be a leader over the other interns that are new. All of this, all of this was made possible through the Office of Career Services. All my internships have been paid and have including housing and stipend. My freshman year, I was in Rock Hall, Maryland, and my sophomore year, I was in Decorah, Iowa. These are just a few places I have traveled to, that I traveled to with internships. I've also attended conferences in St. Louis, which is where I had the chance to interview for my intern with Monsanto. I have also applied to the Thurgood Marshall Leadership Conference, which will be in November 8th through 12th of this year in Washington, D.C. This Leadership Institute will provide opportunities to further develop my leadership, networking, and communi communication skills, as well as attending a career fair. As you can see, the benefits are endless with career services, if the students are willing to work for them. Career services not only gives you the opportunities to travel, but to network and to learn how to conduct yourself professionally. All the advisors in the office are very professional, nice, helpful, and they are like a family to me. Without career services, I won't be able to be a well-rounded young woman that I am today. In closing, informing your students about the Office of Career Services at whatever university they decide to go to will be life-changing for them and beneficial to the students. But of course, they won't get that personal touch that the great University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff gives them. Thank you. Ms. Cherry, come, come up. Ms. Ms. Cherry is in the Office of Career Services and she's going to make a quick statement and we're going to show you a video. Well, good afternoon. I am so excited that you are here on our campus, but I have one question. My first question is, how many of you are familiar with career services? And what, <laughs> I know you are. Well, I get ex I, I don't know what to say because I get excited when I'm talking about career services because it's my passion. And when you hear her say that when she came as a freshman and how we have helped her to develop, that's exactly what we do. On a one-on-one -on -one basis, we deal with our students and we help them to develop a plan of success while they're here at the university because it's my idea that they should come with the beginning, with the end in mind. And when they walk across the stage, we want them to either walk into a career, continue on to professional school, or they, if they do want to get their master's, we also tell them that you can find a company that will pay for that, and you don't have to go through those expenses. When you hear a lot about internships, the reason we focus on internships because that is what's going to make that student marketable upon graduation. If you don't realize it, a lot of our students have problems with work ethics. We work with our students very closely as far as dress, how to present themselves, how to network, and we travel with them all across the country to make sure that they are developing their leadership skills, their communication skills, and all of that. So, I can tell you this, and I know this, because I travel to different conferences across the United States, and I compare notes. Wherever they go, there is a career services, but it's not a career services like at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. And I, I say that seriously, because I'm serious about what I do, and I invest everything that I have into those students. And we have, our staff is the same way. So we treat those students like they are ours, and we make sure, we give them tough love, but we make sure that when they graduate, that they are ready. So thank you. Uh, we wanted to share um, just a few more of our students uh, that have actually been out on internships, and this is kind of a DVD that I, we developed from our office, so you can hear from them about their experiences. Now we're going to have Leon Crumlin come up to talk about our new admission requirements. Good afternoon again. 
Uh, what we are passing out to you is a sheet of paper with our new admission requirements at the university. And we have been, we have been mandated to do several things here at the university based upon state legislative actions. Some of you already know about these, but one of the first things that we are mandated is our funding that we get from the state each year is, is uh, related to our success with students in various areas. Now, the second issue that is very, very important is that the state recently passed a law that says that no one can go to any two-year or four-year institution in the state unless they have at least a 15 ACT. So if they have less than a 15, then they can't go. Uh, and every chance I have an opportunity to talk to young people, I ask them that question. What are you going to do if you don't have that 15 or better ACT when you graduate from high school? And then you get that deer in the headlight -like look, and they don't know. They really don't. And that's why it's important for you and us to work together to help our students get to that college level, because that's important. You know, we, we either going to help them go to college or, you know, other than the military, service industry, they're probably knocking on your door when you're not there. Okay? So that's why it's important. Okay, now, what we've passed out to you is, uh, the first one is unconditional admission. That's pretty self-explanatory, 19 or better ACT and over 2.0 grade point average. That's, that's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. But our conditional admission program, <clears throat> we are paying more attention to those students who have a 15 to 18 ACT. Because just because you have a 15 or better still doesn't mean that you are a top-notch student. You still need some help. So we, have, we are encouraging those individuals to do a student success plan. And that success plan will include uh, tutoring in any area that they had less than 19 in. It will include a mentoring program. We have faculty staff mentors who have volunteered to mentor our students. And we also have a peer mentoring program that we are instituting on campus. So students are going to have contact with multiple people trying to get them to just do the right thing. Okay? So that's our conditional admission program. Now, the conditional prep program, these are the 14 and 13 ACT folks that we're trying to get into college. Because if you have less than a 13, you're really probably not going to make it. You, some can, but statistics tell you that they probably won't. But, so we're going to concentrate on those 13 and 14s. Uh, right now, we're working with several groups with an uh, online ACT prep program with Student Edge. And so if anyone's interested in that, just uh, let us know or let Mr. Hartman know and we can get you that information. But I provided that information to uh, all of the superintendents, so it should work its way down, hopefully, to you guys. Uh, and if it doesn't, like I said, let us know and we'll get that information to you. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a, 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 a concentrated program in June, trying to get them over that hump, because if they don't score the 15 or better ACT, they can score a 62 or better in the reading portion of the compass or a 35 or better on the reading portion of the asset test. So if they do the uh, 62 or the 35, they can still get admitted. But if they do not make those scores, then there's really nothing we can do for them. Okay? Now, once they make that score, we're going to encourage them to take part in our Alliance program. And for those of you who don't know what our Lions program is, uh, you will, because uh, we have some information that's coming down the pike again, and I'll talk about that in a second. But this is a summer program, a summer bridge program, where the student comes in and they take at least two developmental courses, preferably reading and math. That way, come August, they can go right into their regular coursework and don't have to worry about remedial courses. So. Those are out there. Those are things that we're trying to do to help students get ready for college. So the only thing I, what we need your help in is if you're local, just let, you, let your students know that there are assets out there to help you get to the level you need to get to to get into college. We're there to help. 
Uh, I know we have a program. I understand that uh, CR has programs. Um, so it's, it's here in the community. So let them take advantage of it because if they don't score the required 15 or better, they will not go to college, period. Okay? And when you don't go to college, as you know, everybody in this room understands that your opportunities are limited, very limited. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that we are working on in our office is a booklet that we're going to pass down through your superintendents and your, your principals, hopefully get down to you real fast. But this is a booklet of our summer bridge programs, all of them. The Lions program is in here, contact information, um, applications, uh, information about the program, um, uh, STEM Academy is in here. Uh, it's, it's several programs that we have for the summer because statistics says that students coming in as freshmen who participate in some type of bridge program are much, much more successful. And we just want you to be aware of all the programs that we offer here at the university. So uh, expect to see these coming down the pike. Again, if you don't have them by early May, contact us. And we'll bring one to you. <laughs> because sometimes things are a little slow coming down from top to bottom. We understand that. So if you don't have them by by the first part of May, let, me, let Mr. Hartman know or someone on the campus, and we would definitely get one to you ASAP. OK? Now, Mrs. Jones in the uh, admissions office, raise your hand, Mrs. Jones. She has currently a listing of all of the students from your campus who have applied to our university and have their current status. So make sure you see her before you leave so that she can give you your folder with the students from your campus that have applied for admission to the university and it tells you where they stand right now. Okay? Yes, ma'am. ought to be admitted. Or they can retake the ACT in July, or they can take the residual ACT on our campus. It only counts for our campus. So they have, they have a couple options. They can get prepared up to take the July national tests. They can take the residual test on our campus, or they can take the compass or asset test. Or a 35, yes. And if they don't have it, they cannot be admitted. <clears throat> cannot. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Now we get down to the fun part of the program. I'm going to bring up Lee Hartman, who's director of recruitment, and we're going to make some presentations and do a few more things. He's got a couple surprises for you. First of all, I want again to say thanks for coming here today to spend the time with us. And we truly, truly uh, thank you for coming. This is, this is something we've planned for all year long. And we really appreciate you all coming out and being a part of it.